Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how to solve, how to use Laplace transform in order to solve a differential equation, where the differential equation is a first order one. This is the second example of its kind. I figured it's, you know, it's nice to do another one, but with uh, different variables in it. So you'll see, let's have a look at the equation. You'll see this equation here is a first order differential equation. And similar to a previous example that we've done, this is also linear. So you can use a linear method in order to solve this differential equation. But I just wanted to show you another example of how you can use Laplace transforms even with a first order differential equation equation. Okay, so in this equation we've got our dependent variable is v, right, so here's v over here, and our independent variable is t, right, so we're in the time domain here and we want to transform it into the frequency domain or the s domain, so we're going to move from where t is our independent variable to where s is our independent variable and the way we do that is to apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the equation so we do transform of this side transform of that side okay so then we'll have the Laplace transform of our first derivative plus 5 times the Laplace transform of our dependent variable, Laplace transform of a constant. Okay, and then if we go to our formula, the transform of the first derivative looks like this. Okay, so again in, ter in terms of the notation, if you look at this equation here, you've got the Laplace transform of the first derivative of f of t. Right, so S F S, this F S is your Laplace transform. F at zero is your initial condition. So, like I've said before, what I like to do is I like to use the dependent variable in the formula. So I'm going to write this as S V S minus V at zero. Right, so that V S is my Laplace transform, right, which I got from my formula. So if I compare it, can you see? So that V S is in place of the F of S. The V at zero is in place of the F at zero, right? It's just notation. And this is just helpful because then you keep track of what is dependent and what is independent, um, and they match up as well. Okay, you can use it, or don't use it. It's entirely up to you. So that is my Laplace transform of the first derivative. And in my second term, I'm going to have plus 5 times the Laplace transform. And that is just going to be 10 over S. Okay. So now we can apply our initial condition. And this is our initial condition here. That over there is our initial condition. And remember that that notation just means where time is zero, where your independent variable is zero, then V, your dependent variable, is also going to be zero, right? So that one matches up with this term here. So this is zero. Okay, so all you are left with is S V at S, 5 V at S over, like that. Okay, so you've got two terms here, and your Laplace transform is common to both of them. So we can factorize, which means that V at S is 10 over S times S plus. Five, right so at this stage here because you have your Laplace transform on its own you can now apply the inverse Laplace transform right in order to get v of t because that's what the solution to our differential equation is okay so then we look at our expression and you look at your denominator and if your denominator is not the same form as on your table which this is not you then see do you have factors and here you do have factors. You've got these two factors, which means you can use partial fractions. So I can write this as 10 over 
s s plus 5 a over s b over s plus 5 right so that means that s plus 5 and if i make this one term you get s times s plus 5 which means this is going to be a over s plus 5 b s right so you've got the same denominators and because it's an equation it means that the numerators have to be equal to one another so we've got 10 equals s plus 5 okay so then we can say if we let s equals to 0 Right, we're going to get 10 is equal to 5a, which means a is going to be 2. And then if I let s equal minus 5, I'm going to get 10 equals, okay, that's minus 5. It means the first term falls away, which means I get minus 5b, which means b is minus 2. Very neat, nice answers. Okay, that means that our transform is going to be, so that's going to be 2 over S, oh, so that must be minus 2 over S plus 5. Okay, so if you look at the denominators now of our expression, those are the same form as on the table. Okay, so then I can say that therefore V of T is going to be 2. This one is going to 2e to the minus 5t. And that's our answer here. Very neat, nice answer. Please remember that when you are doing these problems for yourself and you come across, you know, your answers like this fraction or like a long decimal, it doesn't mean that it's incorrect. You must always make sure, as long as your process is correct, right, then your, your answer should be correct. Well, maybe not always, but okay. <laughs> but what you can do, if you're not sure, you can then take your answer and try and uh, see if it's going to satisfy your original equation. Okay, so let's see what I mean by that. Let's do that. Let's check and see if this answer is correct. So, my differential equation is, to go back, dv dt, 5v equals 10. Right? So, v is just v of t. But what I need is dv dt. So, if dv dt, oh sorry, not dv dt, because then I'm just going in circles, aren't I? If v of t is equal to 2 minus 2e to the minus 5t, then dv dt is going to be, right, that's going to be 0. This one here is going to be, what's it, minus 5 times 2, so it's 10e to the minus 5t. And if I substitute these two into this differential equation, if the answer is correct, the equation has to balance. So let's take the first derivative plus 5 times 2 minus 2e to the minus 5t, right? Which means I get minus 5t, 10, and then this is going to be minus 10e to the minus 5t. Just put an equals to sign there. So these two add up to 0, which means that's equal to 10, which is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. Right? So the left-hand side we substituted into over here. Right? And when I simplified... I substituted in v of t and the first derivative, it simplified down to 10, which is equal to the, the right-hand side of the equation, right? Which means that your equation balances, which means your answer is correct. So if you're ever uncertain of whether or not you've got the right answer, that's all you do.
right well i hope that video was helpful um i'll see you next time for another example bye